In this video, we'll talk about the importance of mindset conditioning in gaining muscles. Roadblocks, brick walls, obstacles, bumps in the road, uh, reasons, or whatever you call them, they exist and they get in your way daily in our quest to be healthy and fit. Stop giving excuses. Remember that you can have results or excuses, not both. Never let excuses hinder your quest for the healthier and happier life. Also, due to the present access to higher caloric food, the fitness excuses that once ensured our survival now send us to an early grave. The best way to get back on board is to stop making excuses. Now, let's talk about the five most common fitness excuses people use to avoid exercising. I don't have enough time. I have no motivation to work out. I feel intimidated by the fit people there. I don't have anyone to train with. The gym is too expensive or far. These are some of the standard excuses for not making it to the gym that can be heard around the office, school, or park every day. To achieve your health and fitness goals, you have to stop making excuses. But not just that, your mindset plays a significant role as well. A positive mindset is the most powerful tool for reaching your goals. The way you perceive your fitness journey will either make or break your goals. Next, we'll talk about the power of mindset. Why mindset? Well, because fitness begins with the mind, not the body. The mind has always been at the core of building muscle. Before you begin counting your muscle mass, the first step to building lean muscle is to get your mindset right. The essentiality of having a strong mind is often overshadowed by being strong physically. If your mindset is right, you will have mental willpower and direction towards your goal, which sets you up for success. One major mistake far too many people make is failing to adopt the right mindset and then falling off the bandwagon before they really even get started. Now, let's talk about the five simple techniques that can help you mentally prepare yourself to learn the fastest way to gain lean mass and ensure you're on the way to achieving your dream body. Number one, set specific and achievable goals. Number two, cultivate patience. Number three, hard work is your only shortcut. Number four, everyone is different, don't compare. Number five, be completely committed. Number one, set specific and achievable goals. Now, let's be honest, ask yourself, how much muscle do you want to gain? 10 pounds, 20 pounds? You need to be specific. Don't just estimate or simply see how it goes because this is going to be the important factor that helps hold you accountable to follow through on your plans and ensure results. People who don't outline exactly what they're aiming to achieve often end up struggling for the right direction for their muscle gain diet plan in conjunction with their workout plan. Make your goals specific. Write them down. Uh, post it on your mirror or your bedroom wall. Set your phone screen. Just anything that you will see every day. Mindset conditioning has immense power in fueling your determination and commitment in your goal to ultimate successful muscle gain. Number two, cultivate patience. Upon setting your specific goal, it's time to practice and cultivate patience. Muscle gain isn't going to happen overnight. If you're not ready and prepared for a long journey, you're bound to drop out from the game in no time. So many people expect results in minimal time frame and then lose interest when their desired muscle gain is nowhere to be seen. Most athletes can build about 1-3 to three pounds of muscle per month, of course highly depending on their diet and how hard they're working for their muscle gain. So if you're expecting to gain 10 pounds by next month, you're going to be disappointed. Nothing comes easily. Eat smart, work hard, and most importantly, have the patience for results. If you're working with the right muscle gain plan, eventually the results will prove to you all it's worth. Number three, hard work is your only shortcut. There really isn't any shortcut to muscle gaining. The only way to gain muscle is to invest hard work into building and maintaining it. If you're someone who's always looking for the latest quick fix that confidently promises rapid results with little to no effort, you will be greatly disappointed. A good diet designed for muscle gain and at the same time incorporated with constant effort in the gym with the correct workout is the only way to get you the progress and results you're after. There is no other way. The sooner you can accept this fact and be prepared or get started, the sooner and more achievable your goal toward muscle gain is going to come true. Number 4. Everyone is different. Do not compare yourself to others. The ways that your body absorbs nutrients and reacts towards workouts you do are different from other people. Everyone's body is unique and different. 
Another person might build muscle at a certain rate, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you will too. Unnecessary comparison brings disappointment and zero help towards your goal. Focus on your own body, aim for your goals, your plan, your results, and all you should think of is how to progress until you achieve your dream body mass. Remember, nobody else has your body. You do. Focus only on yourself. Number 5. Be completely committed. Improve your muscle gaining mindset by mentally preparing yourself to be completely committed in this process. For instance, commit yourself 100% for at least 6 months if not more. Set short term achievable goals, a significant amount of muscle you wish to build, and it'll keep you on track working towards those goals. This mindset helps you to be realistic. You won't expect immediate results, but instead you'll be focusing on the process and duration because you understand and are aware that muscle gaining takes time and effort. When you are mentally prepared to commit over a time frame, you will persevere through the process. Here's some key motivational strategies you can use to keep you on course when things get tough. Journaling helps you keep track of your progress. Taking progress pictures, super satisfying as you watch your body evolve each day. Having a workout or diet support buddy or partner. Mental and physical support play a big role in helping you stay motivated. In this video, we'll talk about muscle pumping diet. High protein diets such as Zone, Atkins, and Sugar Busters have come and gone for decades, their popularity rising and falling like waves in the ocean. While high protein diets do usually lead to weight loss, they may be unbalanced meal plans that sometimes restrict entire food groups and fail to meet humans' essential needs for vitamins, minerals, and fiber. However, that doesn't have to be the case. Several studies comparing high-protein, low-carbohydrate diets with high-carbohydrate, low-protein diets found high-protein diets to be just as effective and sometimes even more effective. Did you know that protein is one of the nutrients along with carbohydrate, fat, vitamins, minerals, and water? The source of all of these nutrients is good. Some food contains much higher amounts of specific nutrients than others, and sometimes we refer to certain foods as protein food. It's important to realize that all food contains more than one nutrient and most food contains substantial amounts of several nutrients. For example, meat, which is a good source of protein, carbohydrates, fat, riboflavin, and calcium. Protein is an essential nutrient. There is no life without protein. Protein is contained in every part of your body, the skin, hair, blood, body organs, eyes, even fingernails and bone. So why exactly is protein so important? Protein has a critical physiological function. It is primarily used in the body to build, maintain, and repair body tissues. In the event that protein intake is greater than that required by the body for this primary function, excessive protein is converted to energy for immediate use or stored in the body as fat. Protein energy will be used only after other energy sources, carbohydrates and fat, are exhausted or unavailable. Protein is available from both animal and plant sources. The typical U.S. diet is a mixture of protein sources. Variety and choices will provide an adequate diet. The following are some examples of protein content in some typical food. 3 ounces of chicken contains 20 grams of protein. 3 ounces of ground beef contains 21 grams of protein. 2 ounces of pork chop contains 15 grams of protein. 3 quarters of a cup of beans contains 11 grams of protein. 2 tablespoons of peanut butter contains 8 grams of protein. 1 half cup of soybeans contains 10 grams of protein. And if you're wondering about the protein serving size, here's some references. 1 ounce of meat is equal to the size of a matchbox. 3 ounces of meat is equal to the size of a deck of cards. 1 ounce of cheese is equal to the size of 4 dice or 1 slice. 2 tablespoons of nut butter is equal to the size of a ping pong ball. The amount of protein needed varies for different age groups, size, and growth stages. Even though an adult has achieved maximum growth, protein is required for maintaining body tissues. Periods of growth, including infancy, childhood, and pregnancy, increase the protein need to provide building materials. Physiological states such as injury, surgery, or burns increase the need for protein to provide repairing materials. Surveys have shown that Americans eat almost twice as much protein as their bodies need. 
This is probably because of ample supplies of high quality protein and a preference for meat and other animal sources of protein. Food consumption surveys show an average protein intake of approximately 100 grams per day. About 70% of the protein is from animal products. The total protein intake supplies 12% of the total calories. Even with average intakes which are high, some segments of our population may have marginal protein intakes including low income, elderly, and pregnant and lactating women. In less developed countries, the protein deficiency disease Kwashiorkor is seen in growing children. Now let's talk about protein powder. It has become a popular protein source for people trying to improve athletic performance and build muscle mass. For people with cancer, they can provide necessary protein to their diet and help maintain muscle tissue during treatments when experiencing a lack of appetite for eating meats or other high protein foods. Avoid protein powder that contains other ingredients such as creatine, vitamins, or minerals. While these may be high in protein, they tend to be low in calories, so adding higher calorie additions can be beneficial. Did you know that whey protein concentrate is very common and the most affordable form of whey protein? It does contain some lactose. Whey protein isolate is a more concentrated form of whey protein with little to no fat or lactose. It's an acceptable protein source for people on a lactose restricted diet or with lactose intolerance. Hemp protein is a near complete plant based vegan protein that offers the inflammation fighting power of omega 3 essential fatty acids and is high in fiber. Pea protein powder is a plant based protein, vegan, and highly digestible. It has a fluffy texture. Soy protein powder comes in either soy protein isolate or soy protein concentrate. Compared to dairy based protein powders, soy protein powders do not dissolve as well, may have a beany taste, and can cause gas for people sensitive to soy sugars. Furthermore, there are so many ways that you can add more protein into your diet. Cheese. Melt your cheese on sandwiches, breads, tortillas, hamburgers, hot dogs, other meats or fish, vegetables, eggs, or desserts such as stewed fruits or pies. Or you can grate it and add it to soups, sauces, casseroles, vegetable dishes, mashed potatoes, rice, noodles, or meatloaf. Cottage cheese or ricotta cheese. Mix with or use with fruits and vegetables. Add them to casseroles, spaghetti, noodles, and egg dishes such as omelets, scrambled eggs, and souffles. Milk or soy milk. Use in beverages, cooking, hot cereals, soups, cocas, and puddings in place of water. Dry milk powder. You can choose to add this to regular milk and milk drinks such as pasteurized eggnog and milkshakes or use in casseroles, meatloaf, breads, muffins, sauces, or any milk-based dessert. Yogurt. Add yogurt to cereals, fruits, gelatin, and pies or you can blend or whip with soft or cooked fruits. You can even sandwich ice cream or frozen yogurt between pound cake, cookies, or graham crackers. Eggs. Add chopped, hard-cooked eggs to salads and dressings, vegetables, casseroles, and meat salads. Add extra eggs or egg whites to quiches, pancakes, and french toast. Add extra egg whites to scrambled eggs and omelets. Egg whites are a great way to add more protein without saturated fat or cholesterol. Nuts, seeds, wheat germs, and oats. In fact, there are several ways to add them into your diet. You can sprinkle them on fruit, cereal, ice cream, yogurt, vegetables, salads, and toast as a crunchy topping. Or you can blend them with parsley, spinach, herbs, and cream for a noodle, pasta, or vegetable sauce. Meat and fish. Add chopped cooked meat and fish to vegetables, salads, casseroles, soups, or sauces. You can use them in omelets, sandwich fillings, and chicken stuffing. We all know that a high protein diet is good for muscle building, however, please do not take excessive protein. Excessive intake of protein will lead you to certain health risks. Some of the examples of health risks include ketosis, colorectal cancer, heart disease, and kidney disease. In addition, there are certain types of protein that you need to take note of. Fat. Although research has shown that high protein diets produce positive effects on blood glucose and blood lipid levels by decreasing circulating insulin, reducing triglycerides, and raising HDL levels, 
there is minimal effect on LDL levels, it's important to remember that even with an emphasis on lean protein, this type of diet is still higher in total fat, saturated fat, and cholesterol than lower protein, high carbohydrate diets, and long-term effects remain unknown. Red meat. High protein diets tend to be heavy on red meat. Even though data is inconclusive, high intakes of both red meat and processed meats, particularly if cooked at high temperatures, have been linked to an increased risk of diverticulitis in men. Calcium Since high protein diets are directly related to a higher output of urinary calcium, researchers in the 1990s concluded that high protein intakes had an adverse effect on bones. We now know that's not the case. If accompanied by adequate calcium, about three servings of low-fat dairy per day or the equivalent, high-protein diets can not only increase calcium uptake, absorbing as much as 25%, but also enhance bone health, preserving bone even during weight loss, according to a 2008 Journal of Nutrition study. In this video, we'll talk about the must-have muscle-gaining supplements. Yes, you can definitely build muscles without taking supplements, but this will take a much longer period of time to achieve the same results as those who took the right supplements. So ask yourself, do you want to shave off months of unnecessary hard work and get results fast? If your answer is yes, then you should invest in supplements. Without further ado, let's get started. Generally, to build up muscle, it's still better to achieve it through diet and exercise, while supplementation should only be used for additive effects. Nonetheless, it shouldn't be pushed aside, as supplements are still generally used for health and building muscle. Foods are usually insufficient for anyone that's looking to gain muscle in the fastest manner. The best option is to take in the right supplements that your body needs. The top three most used supplements are creatine, vitamin D, and omega-3 supplement from fish oil. You might wonder if omega-3 fatty acids from flax or chia seeds should be considered as well, but the fact is, flax and chia seeds don't provide sufficient supplement on their own. Flax and chia seeds are found in the form of alpha-linoleic acid, which has to be converted by the body into usable form, and the ratio conversion is rather poor. Number 1. Creatine Creatine is a molecule produced in the body where it stores high-energy phosphate groups in the form of phosphocreatine, or creatine phosphate. Creatine supplementation confers a variety of health risks, notably neuroprotective and cardioprotective. It's usually used by athletes to increase both power output and lean mass. There are various types of creatine, and creatine monohydrate is the most affordable and most effective. It dissolves in water more easily and is best to be taken 5 grams a day daily while consuming it like any other vitamin. Higher doses up to 10 grams a day may be prudent for those with a high amount of muscle mass and high activity levels. Stomach cramping can occur when creatine is supplemented without sufficient water. Diarrhea and nausea can occur when too much creatine is supplemented at once, in which case doses should be spread out over the day and taken with meals. Number 2. Vitamin D is a fat-soluble nutrient and it is one of the 24 micronutrients critical for human survival. The sun is the major natural source of the nutrient, but vitamin D is also found naturally in fish and eggs while it is also present in dairy products. Supplemental vitamin D is associated with a wide range of benefits, including increased cognition, immune health, bone health, and well-being, while reducing the risk of cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and multiple sclerosis. People deficient in vitamin D may also experience increased testosterone levels after supplementation, which can be remedied where the body produces vitamin D from cholesterol, provided there is an adequate amount of UV light from sun exposure. Most people are not deficient in vitamin D, but they don't have an optimal level of vitamin D either. Due to the many health benefits of vitamin D, supplementation is encouraged if optimal levels are not present in the body. The recommended daily allowance for vitamin D is currently set at 400 to 800 international units a day, but this is too low for adults. The safe upper limit in the United States and Canada is 4,000 IU a day, but research suggests that the true safe upper limit is 10,000 IU a day. As vitamin D is fat soluble, it has to be taken with a fatty acid that can serve as a transport, and it should be taken daily with meals or a source of fat like fish oil. It's best to be taken earlier in the day as it may disrupt sleep pattern if taken later in the evening. Before we proceed to the third top supplement, let me share with you some supplement facts of vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiency is relatively common in athletes and is associated with muscle weakness and atrophy, specifically type 2 muscle fiber atrophy. 
skipping out on this vitamin is just as bad as skipping out on leg day. Number three, omega-3 fish oil. Fish oil is a common term used to refer to two kinds of omega-3 fatty acids, eicosapentaenoic acid and docosahexaenoic acid, and they're usually found in fish, animal products, as well as phytoplankton. Fish oil is recommended as a source of these omega-3 fats, as it's the cheapest and most common source of them. Fish oil provides a variety of benefits when supplemented, particularly when the ratio of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids in the body is almost equal, or one-to-one. -one. Did you know that the average diet, red meat, eggs, and so forth, is high in omega-6 fatty acids, which is why fish oil is recommended to balance the ratio? A ratio of roughly one-to-one -one is associated with healthier blood vessels, a lower lipid count, and a reduced risk for plaque buildup. Moreover, fish oil can decrease the risk of diabetes and several forms of cancer, including breast cancer. Fish oil works primarily through eicosanoids, which are signaling molecules, and a proper ratio of omega-3 to 6 fatty acids will influence which eicosanoids are released in response to stress. It should be noted that fish oil can also reduce triglycerides in people with high triglyceride levels. However, it can also increase cholesterol, so care should be taken before supplementing fish oil for this purpose. Fish oil doses vary depending on the goal of supplementation. As for general health, 250 milligrams of combined EPA and DHA is the minimum dose and can be obtained via fish intake. Supplement Facts Fish oil can reduce blood clotting and should be supplemented with caution if blood thinning medications, aspirin, warfarin, or clopidogrel are already present in the body. Next, we'll talk about lists of foods and supplements to avoid. When it comes to determining what food you should and should not eat, the only significant point is that calories matter more than specific foods. Adequate macro and micronutrition are an essential part of a healthy diet and, nonetheless, proper caloric intake is the most important rule regardless of the source and whether or not the food is natural, whole, clean, or dirty. Preparation is the key to eating healthy. It may sound tricky and complex to prepare. Don't overthink it. Instead, choose food that you enjoy eating and make a balanced meal. Various nutrition studies have indicated that having excess body fat, type 2 diabetes, and increase in weight are resultant from consuming and storing excess calories than one burns. Eating too much of any type of calories, whether from whole food or not, will cause these problems. Generally, the food that you really need to avoid when bulking is junk food and sugary food. Sugars are the main factor that you really need to look out for, as they're present in foods particularly that aren't fresh, frozen, or dried. Additionally, sauces such as pasta sauce, ketchup, and chili sauce contain sugar as well. You should also avoid fruit juices and fizzy drinks. There's various sugar content that you need to look out for as well, and this list below is generally what you need to keep an eye out for. Muscle development supplements, including testosterone booster and protein supplements, are compounds that act to enhance muscle protein synthesis or otherwise enhance muscle mass. There are various supplements that would improve muscle growth, but only a handful of them are actually scientifically proven to work if consumed in the recommended method. Supplements that do not offer any muscle growth are considered placebo pills and powders, which is merely an implication to your mind that it affects your body. These supplements only give you the psychological benefit, and if you believe it works, than any physiological effect. So save yourself from investing in pills and powders that don't work, and invest in those that are proven to promote muscle growth. Taking testosterone boosters is a choice. However, it's always a good idea to cycle testosterone boosters, as they do have side effects that could be detrimental to your health if taken excessively, and it could lead to undesirable side effects that are associated with prolonged use. There could be adverse side effects on the testicles, like atrophy, and it may reduce HPTA stimulation over time if used too much. Compounds that act in the hypothalamus can cause symptoms of what people call adrenal fatigue, where the hypothalamus starts to fatigue. There are three prime examples of compounds that have been scientifically proven that don't affect testosterone levels, which are tribulus terrestris, ZMA, and diaspartic acid. Tribulus terrestris simply doesn't have any factors that would increase testosterone levels, as well as body composition and improving exercise performance. ZMA is a combination of zinc, magnesium, and vitamin B6, which is in the same line with tribulus terrestris. People who are deficient from zinc and magnesium would benefit for their overall health, but not for increasing testosterone level. The least ZMA could do is removing micronutrient deficiency that is suppressing testosterone production. D-aspartic acid could increase testosterone levels, but the effects are short-lived and temporary. To put it in one word, it's unreliable. 
There are various scientific studies that have been conducted to determine if increasing testosterone levels could help with boosting muscle gains. The results pretty much show that no matter how high you increase your testosterone levels, it wouldn't help boost muscle building compared to consuming proper diet meals and viable supplements. Consumed for the purpose of increasing dietary protein when food is not taken, it's typically seen as a food product or a meal replacement. Protein powders come from various sources such as milk, beef, rice, peas, or hemp. Typically used in conjunction with a proper diet to increase dietary protein intake, some specific types of protein are made for certain scenarios, such as casein protein for a slow-release protein and whey protein for a faster release. Unfortunately, protein supplements don't directly help you accelerate muscle gain, but consuming enough protein could work. Compared to consuming protein from food, protein supplements are convenient for easy snacking and most of the protein supplements are low in carbs as well as fat, which is good for a proper meal plan. Moreover, they're affordable in terms of price per gram of protein.